for entrepreneurs to inspire and empower others with their startup stories. We invite you to sit back, get relaxed, and learn a bit more about the importance of insurance, especially as we navigate through COVID, as well as the extreme weather conditions around the country. Additionally, we are all spending more time at home. Keeping living spaces uh, is more important than ever. You are sure to learn a few tips to ensure you're kept ensure your home is kept clean during, during this COVID time. Again, we wanna remind everyone tax season has begun. A special thanks to our returning clients and a welcome to those who are joining us this year. We look forward to many, many uh, great times as we, you know, throughout this tax season and financial uh, planning service. I would like to introduce our speakers for the evening. We have two wonderful people on, uh, Mr. Greaves and Ms. Roberts. So first, Mr. Eustace Greaves Jr. Uh, he is the owner and principal of Bridge, Agent, Bridge Insurance Agency and the Greaves Financial Services. For the last 38 years, Mr. Greaves has provided his clients with integrated insurance and income tax planning preparation strategies providing them the solutions they need to meet their chosen financial goals so they meet so that they may live the live life fully covered he also conducts a point and insurance reduction workshop which is also known as the defensive driving workshop for those seeking to improve their driving skills lower their automobile insurance premiums and reduce points on new york state drive on their new york state driver's license as a New York State licensed continuing ed moderator, Mr. Grease also provides exam monitoring services for New York State licensing insurance agents and brokers. And additionally, we have Ms. Nubia Roberts. She's the owner of Comfy Space INC. Comfy Space was founded by Nubia Roberts, who had relocated to back to New York after residing in Orlando, Florida for 15 years. Her decisions to do so were was, was a simple one. Subsequently, to obtaining her BS in psychology and a master's in social work, she began working on her doctorate in, in a multidisciplinary human services. And though New York would be the most suitable location to conduct her research. Obtaining employment in her field of study, however, was not as easy as she anticipated. As a, as a consequence, she started thinking about the options she might have had at her disposal. One thing she always truly enjoyed doing, but believe it or not, was cleaning. It's her therapy. Thus, she started a cleaning business and now the rest is an ongoing history. So tonight, as I stated, we have two great, uh, individuals who are in business who are going to bring their stories and enlighten us on their path especially through covid we're going to discuss the importance of insuring the home which now we enjoy more than ever you know being that where majority of us have been able to work from home and you know the importance of understanding how to keep you know the house clean and learn any new strategies or information during this COVID time as far as, you know, what can be used as cleaning uh, solutions. So first I want to bring on Mr. Greaves. Uh, he's gonna be our main speaker tonight and he's gonna let us know about the importance of insurance in regards to the home edition. So Mr. Greaves, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. I'd like to, um... I'd like to take control of your screen now. <laughs> <laughs> Please, you're more than welcome. More than welcome? Okay, let me see. How am I going to do that? Funny, I don't see it. So you know what I'm going to do? Just bear with me one second. Uh, let me do this. Uh, just bear with me one second. While, I, while, I'm, while I'm navigating, I didn't know, did, could anybody just see the screen just then? 
the whole dawn. Did you, well, let's do, let me, let me do this then. Okay, I'm very sorry. I'm usually much, much better at this than I am tonight. So I apologize, I apologize tremendously. Anyway, let me introduce myself. I'm Eustace Leon Greaves Jr. I'll be bringing the presentation up in a hot minute. Um, I guess just by way of introduction, thank you, Mr. Hines. Uh, that is it for the past 39 years, my life has been the work of making sure that people are ready to, as I like to say, be their own best first responders. I think when you get right down to it, that's what it's all about. Uh, let's take a look at what's happening in the world today. Um, Texas, let's use Texas as an example. Uh, a state that decided that in order to not have to deal with certain federal regulations in terms of energy use and energy setup, they decided to go completely on their own, uh, completely independent so that they could set things up exactly the way they wanted. And because of that, you've got, I think, like four major utilities, according to a friend of mine who lives there and is lucky and fortunate to be able to, um, to have heat and electricity. But because of that, there's no real regulation. And so that's why you have people in their homes, freezing, pipes bursting, what have you. I mean, let's talk about that for a reason. What is one of the major reasons for this situation across a huge swath of the country? Very simple, climate change, climate change. People don't realize it. When we talk about global warming, we're not talking about not being able to make snow, you know, snowballs or snowmen. We're talking about the North and the South Pole. And because of that situation, the North and the South Poles are melting. And because they're melting, they don't have the, the cold necessary to retain the jet stream or to keep the jet stream in the natural way it was intended to be. And that's why the jet stream dipped all the way down to Houston, Texas, and is going all the way back now to Massachusetts and what have you. So climate change is very real. When we in the insurance industry talk, you know, think about the future, I want you to think about a couple of things. Climate change, now think about it. Even when the temperature goes back up next week in Texas and those other Southern states into the 70s, what's going to happen? Now you're going to have flooding because remember snow and ice is nothing more than frozen water. So if they didn't heed the lessons learned after Hurricane Matthew a few years ago and buy flood insurance, guess what? All of those folks, there's gonna, you're gonna have sections of Texas and Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia that will literally be under water. So when we talk about insurance, yes, we have to talk about insurance as a proactive activity. Why? I want you to understand two truths about insurance. Ladies and gentlemen, you carry these to your grave. There are two truths about insurance. Number one, it's the only product or service you cannot buy when you need it. Let me say that again. It's the only product or service out there you cannot buy when you need it. So if you need a new pair of shoes, you can go buy a new pair of shoes. You need, some, you need some thread to sew up a ripped garment, you can buy thread. But you can't replace that garment with insurance money if you don't have renter's insurance and you're renting an apartment. You can't replace anything in that apartment, more or less, if you don't have proper renter's insurance in order to make sure that money walks in the door when disaster leaves. So, um, I mean, and, and let's talk about renter's insurance. And, and oh, sorry, point number two, point number two, very simple. I already said that insurance is the only product you cannot buy when you need it. And it's one of the few products where for a few drops of ink and pennies on the dollar, you can generate thousands of dollars when you need it. So think about it, your house is on fire. This is what happens when your house is on fire. You know, you're there with the contractor and the insurance adjuster, and you're holding a bucket. We will make believe my hat is the bucket. What's in this bucket is the money that your policy is going to provide to rebuild that house. There's no other money, only the money in the bucket. So you have to make sure that what's in the bucket is going to be sufficient to meet your need to rebuild the house exactly as it was, but not only exactly as it was, but up to the current building codes. 
All right, so it's not enough to build it the way it was built back in 1960 or 1970, even 1980. All of the building codes recently have been enhanced, everything from electrical to plumbing. So guess what? We have to have more money in this bucket to meet those needs, okay? Now, a friend of mine is, a, is an adjuster down in Texas and I tried to get her on the phone today. She calls herself the claims lady, but her phone is blowing up because every, I, I, you know, I'm on several Facebook groups with other independent insurance agencies and already they have gotten some, they've gotten upwards of 80 claims individually from clients who now have burst water, have, you know, burst pipes and water damage throughout the house. Uh, roofs are literally peeling. All of this is happening because of the snow situation down there. Now, Mr. Hines, you mentioned, you mentioned COVID. How many, just, you know, just by a show of hands, you know, clicking on the screen and, and you know, putting the hand, how many of you have heard of at least one person, one death, where family had to set up a GoFundMe campaign to, to, to put that person away. Think about it, a GoFundMe campaign. I recently had a group of pastors, and, and this is the funny thing. And I told them, I said, you know, you bunch of, I said, you, you know, God's going to get you for doing this to me. They were giving me the devil because they were saying, oh, you should have made us give you time to come to the church and talk about life insurance because I'm sick and tired of waiting for people to do a GoFundMe campaign to have the home going service. And then I've got to cut my fee. I've got to cut my fee. The organist got to cut their fee. This one's got to cut their fee. And then all you can do is set fire to them at the end of the service. I said, well, how come you didn't invite me? But here's the reality. Let's talk about COVID. Uh, I had a slide and unfortunately, I don't know what happened. I hope to bring it up in a little while. I had a slide. 66% of Americans who were, who were um, surveyed by the lifehappens.org group, 66% of Americans said that since the pandemic, they've come to realize more than ever before the necessity of having proper life insurance. And what's proper life insurance? Let me put it this way. I've paid a lot of claims in my time. Proper life insurance is when you're sitting at the table back in the old days and the widow or the widower is sitting there and the two little kids, there's always two little kids with the big round eyes. And the only question that widow or widower has is, is it enough? And how much is there? They never ask if it's term, whole life, uh, uh, um, index universal life, regular universal life, this variable life, this, they, they don't ask that. They simply wanna know two questions. How much is there? In other words, what's in that bucket? And will it be enough? Now, and let me tell you what's going to be happening in terms of COVID, ladies and gentlemen, when we talk about things like life insurance. Recording in I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I'm innocent. Ms. Madoss, I'm innocent. Anyway. Um, okay, somebody, somebody came on and they have to mute themselves, I think. Unmute. Can you hear me again? We can hear you. Go ahead. Very, very good. So I'm already hearing that in terms of, let's say, life insurance and disability insurance, because of COVID, a lot of firms are looking at, we're going to be seeing some price increases because just as we suffered millions of dollars of losses back in the mid-1980s because of what we now call AIDS, HIV, COVID is the new AIDS, HIV. And insurance companies are going to react to that the way they usually do. They're going to tighten up underwriting. So it's not going to be that easy for you to get insurance. They're going to, they're going to increase prices because now, guess what? Since COVID, especially in the black and, and brown communities, our life expectancy has decreased on average by 2.7 years. And that's because of COVID. I just I found that I found that little statistic today. 2.7 years lower life expectancy. I've had situations with family clients of mine where the father died and the son died. 
and then the uncle died and the cousin died. And the father may have been in his 50s, the, the sons may have been in their early 30s. This is a reality. Um, so again, when we're talking about COVID and when I talk about being your own, I want people to live life fully covered. I also talk about building walls around your wealth. One way to build walls around your wealth is to make sure that whether you live or whether you live too long, die too soon or become disabled, the family doesn't lose the family home. That's life insurance. That's why you need to think about life insurance and disability insurance, ladies and gentlemen, because sometimes the Mack truck doesn't kill you. Okay, you need to think about things because you don't always die. I was, I was chatting with a very intelligent young lady today and I mentioned uh, Gwyneth Paltrow and the fact that she um, had COVID-19 and she mentioned that she is still foggy. She hasn't regained her normal, and she's a very intelligent person, hasn't regained her normal mental acuity, which is frightening. I mean, she's a heck of a lot younger than me and she's not thinking the way she used to. We also have a problem with young people. I mean, children who have lost their ability to play, their ability to be expressive because they were subjected to COVID-19. And I'm so glad that Ms. Roberts is on tonight because what she does and can do for families is so important and businesses, so important in terms of creating that safe environment, that disinfected environment or that, or that protocol system to make sure that you keep yourself healthy. Excuse me, I have some notes here, so just bear with me a second. So again, we have mentioned climate change and, um, and COVID. So, so, I mean, when we're talking about that, I want you to think about this. I want you to think about a big circle and you are in the middle of that circle and, and around you in that circle are things like death, disability, special needs. If you have a special needs child, fire, theft, water pipes breaking, climate change. Those are the dangers that are trying to impact on your life and your circle of life, as I call it. What you need to surround yourself with in an inner circle are the insurance coverages you would need to protect yourself. So again, not only life, not only the disability, but guess what? We learned one thing because of COVID-19. Nursing homes are pretty full and not everybody in nursing homes is old. There's a lot of young people in nursing homes. Um, fire. Theft, you know, just by show of hands, I don't know how many people on the call are renters again, but do you have renters insurance? Because guess what? In the event of a fire in your building, uh, the landlord will get their building rebuilt. You need to have to go out and find another apartment to live in while you hope your apartment is going to be rebuilt and you hope you can get back in there. But the only way to do that is to keep paying rent. But how can you pay rent there and then come up with first, last, and security someplace else? How do you replace the clothing, the this, the that? And that goes with it. And also, even if you have a house, do you have, and this is very important, I, I challenge everyone who has a home, contact your insurance professional and find out whether or not you have the replacement cost on your home. If you don't have replacement cost coverage on your home, there's only one of two reasons. Either the coverage that you can get only goes up to a certain amount, that's no problem. But if you can get more, you should get more to cover that replacement cost. Because again, you know, think about it. You know, a hat is an apt metaphor. You know, if you don't have enough money in the bucket, then you're walking hat in hand trying to get help. And that's no way to be. Uh, Ms. Madoff, is there anything else you want me to touch on right now? Well, oh, thank Mr. you for that. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you for that, you know, over important information, Mr. Grease, because, you know, again, I think I share the same field that you're in and we understand the importance of the pre-planning on many different levels. And it's just to try to get this information out to people before they actually need whatever the policies or insurance products protect. So yes, this is a conversation that we want to encourage folks to have to see what, what their situation uh will call for in the mishaps as if, an, if a tragedy does take place. Again, whether it be property or something dealing with life, we have to make sure that both are in, in order. Uh, we wanna just briefly, well, not briefly, we're gonna jump to Ms. Roberts 
um, for her to discuss her business. And hopefully we'll have some time to circle back and be able to have that presentation because we do want to leave time for any questions and answers that we can provide the audience. Sure. So uh, let's first see, I mean, in the, uh, on the back end, we want to make sure that you're able to connect your screen and share your slides uh, while Ms. Roberts is speaking. Uh, so let's let's pivot to Ms. Roberts as she's with Comfy Homes. Well, hello everyone. Good evening and thank you much for the invite to be here this evening. I really do appreciate it. As my bio stated, I am with uh, Comfy Space Inc. And I, I returned to New York a couple of years ago and I think I didn't plan it properly because I just assumed coming back to New York with a degree, I'll be able to find a job. Hmm. I got here and I was very surprised that I couldn't for a lot of reasons. So I started immediately thinking what my other options are, what can I do that requires little to no cash. And after about six months to a year of volunteering here, volunteering there, sending a resume here, sending one there, I decided why on the earth am I walking around begging people for a job when I could clean a house with my eyes closed? So I figured, well, I'm from the Caribbean and look, we're, we're no strangers to hard work and no matter how educated we are, we got to do what we got to do. So I made up some cards and supplies, started hitting all my friends up. I'm like, look, your house need cleaning, your house need cleaning. I need to clean all your house for cash, not, not just to clean it, for cash. <laughs> but what happened in the process is that they started referring me to their friends and their friends started referring me. And before long, it occurred to me that, okay, this is really not just to put cash in your pocket for the meantime. There is something really viable here with a lot of potential. So I made the conscious decision to put education and the degrees on the back burner and I shoot, I headed for the toilets and the bathtubs, you know, and I have to say I don't regret it one bit. Um, what I'm going to, I'm going to briefly go through, uh, well, we're going to look at two spaces today, the office and the home. But before I jump into the examples I have and the scenarios I'm going to share with you, I have three things that I want to share with you that I need you to keep in mind while I go through the scenarios. The first thing is this, the Bureau of Labor and Statistics in 2014 stated that around 4,821 workers died in the workplace due to injury or disease. That's a lot of people. Or, uh, in addition, OSHA, which is the Occupational Safety and Hazard Administration, defines an occupational hazard as a thing which may cause harm to employees in the workplace. The third thing is that a lot of people kind of get cleaning and sanitizing and cleaning and disinfecting a little bit confused. They think it's the same and they really are not. Now, a thorough clean removes germs, dirt, and impurities from surfaces. However, thoroughly cleaning your place does not kill the germ. Removing them lowers the numbers and thus the health risks, but it doesn't kill them. Disinfectant, on the other hand, that's the use of chemicals, that process kills the germs, but it doesn't clean the place. So in order to get the total thing, you have to combine both of them. A lot of people want to pay for one and not the other. And I'm like, okay, they kind of come as a package. I'm not going to separate them because then I don't feel I did a good job when I leave. And when I leave your house, I need to feel comfortable enough to know that the job I did in your house is the same thing I would do in mine. And I am OCD at home, literally. When my brothers visit, I walk with a rag behind them. Uh, yeah. So yeah, when I leave your house, I want to make sure your house looks like mine. So I'm going to give you a couple scenarios and I just need you to think 
think about them for a minute and imagine yourselves in those situations. So let's look at the office space. Now, dirty floors. If you if you have dirty floors, what are some of the things can happen? Slip and fall, injury. So Mark came into the office on Monday. He spilled his coke. He didn't wipe it up. You have no cleaning service because you refuse to pay me to clean your office because you think that's a lot of money coming out of your purse. Okay, fine. But that coke stayed on the floor, dried up a bit, got sticky, and then Betty came in on two days after with her six inch heels and slide in it. Now she has a broken leg, a broken arm. Now does the fee that you were supposed to pay me look really appetizing right now? Because it's gonna be so much less than what you're gonna to have to pay if Betty sues you or if a client or an investor walk into your office and slip on that same spill, all right? What about, let's look about a messy place messes so usually you would walk into an office and there's boxes you have boxes there boxes at the exit then what if there's a fire in the building your employees cannot get out as fast as they can they may trip and fall over boxes injure themselves again then again the money you would have to pay on the back end is much less than what you would have had to give me to come in once a week or twice a month to do the same thing so I just need you all to think about the scenarios as I'm going through them. Now, another thing is an disorganized office. Now, some people work in, in this function very well. Most people I know don't. But if you have a dysfunctional office, not only will some of your employees leave you and some of the good ones, the rest that remain may not feel too comfortable working in that space. On the other hand, I could come in once a week, make sure the boxes are in the right place, make sure everything is in the, on the proper shelves. In that way, when you have a project and a deadline, you know exactly where to go, get this and get that. Your project is finished on time and you get paid for your project, opposed to spending a month to find what you bought last month for the project or having to reorder the same thing that you knew you bought last month my service looks really good right now, doesn't it? Well, let's look about ventilation. Some of you probably have offices and it's winter now, so you don't open that office at all. It's good to open, even in the winter months, it's good to open your office, even if it's just for an hour, an hour and a half, let some fresh air come in. It's very helpful. A lot of the offices I go to, the windows only get open when I get there. Other than that, those windows are not touched. So it's important to, you know, have a cleaning company to do that. Now, one of the other thing is appearance. No customer wants to do business with a, in a dirty business. A customer walks into your office and it's dirty, cluttered, messy. There are a couple of things that are gonna happen. They're gonna walk right back out the door, you just lost business. They're gonna go tell all their friends that you have a nasty office, so you just lost business. And they might report you. Worst case scenario, they might stumble in a box and fall over in your business place. The money you were supposed to pay me to do it, so it looks good right now, doesn't it? I bet it does. So those are a couple of things that you, especially for those of you in business, need to look at when I tell you the price and you start thinking that, Oh, that's too expensive. I don't want to do that. In the long run, your business runs smoother, your staff is more productive, and you're happier and you're healthier. Now, let's look at the home for a short. We know people, and I'm sure some of you all do it, but you walk in the house on Monday, you take the shoes off, and you leave it right in front of the door, and you figure, okay, I'll take it to the closet or, you know, wherever it's supposed to be real soon. But you don't. The shoes you take off Tuesday, it joins the one Monday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. By Saturday, you look at the whole pile of shoes in front of the door and you're thinking, I should really pick them up and put them in the closet. But it's so much, it's not one trip anymore. You might have to make about two or three trips and you just go, forget it, I'll get that later. Until the entire closet is out by the front door 
now you have a problem because you really have to take some time where if I had someone come into your house, your shoes would be where it's supposed to be. You don't have to, yes, you could come in every day and just drop it there. And we come at the end of the week or during the week and we pack everything back where it's supposed to be. Now, when it comes to psychology and emotional and mental health, being in a clean space is a godsend. It's, it's a gift of the gods. Anxiety, depression, all these things can be the result of you living in a cluttered and dirty space. So having our company come in once a month or twice a month or every three weeks to give you a place to total clean, it makes you feel good. You want to go home. I have clients before I started cleaning, they didn't like to come home. Now they come home and they want to be there. Not only do they want to be there, they have no problem inviting their family and friends over. There goes the social isolation. They don't have to be embarrassed anymore to bring the friends and family over. So they don't have to sit in the house and feel depressed because they can't socialize anymore. So having me come in or having one of my team members come in and get your house to the point where it's supposed to be, where you can thrive and be productive, it's a win-win for all of us. So just tell me when you need me to be there and I'll be happy to show up. And if there's anything else that I need to add, oh, as far as detergents are concerned, I don't use a specific um, set of detergents because different clients want different things. So I give the client the option of deciding what they are comfortable with. If they want any specialty products, they're, they purchase their own products and we use it. Um, but we don't have a special set of products that we use. Whatever the client likes, that's what is used. Understood. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Roberts. You're Listen, the, you know, prior to COVID, cleaning offices and cleaning the residential areas was more, well, residentially a luxury, right? And mm -hmm. on the commercial side, it is necessary. One trick I would employ you to use is just to let all your uh, commercial clients knows that, hey, this is a write-off expense, you know, and again, that's just for the, the tax professional in, our, in us on our side. Uh, but now with COVID, you know, in early March of 2020, a, fr a couple of people I know, we were really looking into the, uh, the franchises that did more of the, you know, clean outs and uh, the commercial with the foggers and things of that nature to, you know, jump on the, the opportunity as we noticed that there would be a more of a need for the uh, disinfectant, and I'm using that term loosely based on the information that you just taught us, uh, of surfaces and making sure it was appealing because of the COVID situation. So again, what we've learned from Ms. Roberts and Mr. Greaves is that preventative me measures are worth the time, energy, and expense, you know, with the, other than looking at what would be the results of not uh, looking at how can we prevent these issues. So, you know, great. I want to, uh, you know, again, great information. And I think we have some questions in the chat. Uh, I would like to read this one off to you, Mr. Greaves. Are you there with me? We have a question. It says, what is the average cost of renters? What is the average cost of a renter's insurance policy? Nationwide, a renter's insurance policy policy averages $1 a day, $365 a year. I've got clients who pay $120. I've got one client because she and her husband, everything is either Gucci or is Fendi a name? I don't know. Fendi. Chanel, everything they own is that. Their renter's policy is $1,800 a year. Trust me, I don't stop them from buying whatever they want to buy. But because they know they have this stuff in the apartment, they want to insure it. I said, wonderful. Uh, yeah, so on average, nationwide, it's $1 a day. Now, let's be realistic. When we were, when people were going to their office every day before COVID, what is a cup of coffee? Um, 
to buy a cup of coffee in Midtown Manhattan, two dollars, two fifty. <laughs> so right there, right there, you, you've paid for two and a half days. And you could make coffee in the office probably. So right there, you paid for two and a half days of renter's insurance. And if you multiply that by five days, then if you multiply, if, if you then add the money you waste because you pick up a magazine um, to ride on the way home on the train and you fall asleep on the train and you never read the magazine or you buy a blouse that you're never going to wear, these are the little holes in the boat that cause you to lose your money. But again, to answer the question, basically $1 a day, $1 each day. Listen, I, I, I truly believe that's, you know, insurance on the whole, I'm a lover of it in every way. And looking at, I don't know where you're buying your coffee in Midtown. I would love to know, cause it seems like you have a, a guy who knows a guy where I can coffee from, but it's a tremendous, you know, effort to put in beforehand. Cause again, fires, floods, you know, disaster, it never has a timeline and it happens when we least expect it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, knowing that these, let's not, I mean, I use the word product loosely, but these are more than just products. You know, these are things that a life we need in life because we live and it's, even though it's not mandatory, you know, you are mandatory needed, you, you need to have auto insurance because it's a liability for the state and, you know, the municipalities. You have to think personally, your renter's insurance, your homeowner's insurance, all of the business commercial lines that you have, these are essential to you running your business and running your family. So it is important to understand what those policies uh, do for you. We have another question for you, Mr. Greaves. I mean, this one comes in from Sharon mm -hmm. and it is what liabilities are covered with renter's insurance? And I know it, it's a it's a broad question, but if you bid down from the content, well, well, let me let me let me let me put it this way: the your your renters policies, as well as your homeowner policies, all of these all of those fall under homeowners deals with home renters co-op condo, and dwelling. Um, so when we talk about liability, liability is one of the two parts. Of a home of a home insurance policy, so liability simply means that that's something you're responsible for. You're responsible to act as a prudent person. So if it snows, you're responsible for shoveling and de-icing your walk and keeping it clear for passerby. If you are driving a car, you're responsible for having good brakes. But if you don't have good brakes and it results in you hitting somebody and they later find out that your brakes were faulty because you didn't maintenance necessary, now you may actually be up for manslaughter. So when we talk about liability, liability speaks to doing what a prudent person would normally do. And there's two types of liability under a, a home policy. Number one is personal liability, again, for that bad sidewalk or that rug that's loose on the floor and it causes someone to trip. Or as our friend here said, you know, my, my new best friend who if I ever let her see my old office in the past, she would have lost her mind. She would have said, no, I give up. I have met, I have met the devil in the mess. I'm telling you right now. Um, you, you know, uh, li so liability, so, so that's, one, that's one form of liability. Somebody's, a box falls off. As she was saying, you know, it's true. A box, you had boxes stacked up in an office or even in your home and they fall over, they hit somebody. Now you've got a liability situation. Mm -hmm. The other form of liability is what we call medical payments to others, which means that, for example, you come over, you don't want to sue me because you tripped on the roller skate, but now you've got to go to the hospital. You've got to pay, you know, um, you got to pay co-insurance, you got to pay and you got to pay co-payments. Well, I can send you to the hospital with $5,000 and hopefully you won't turn around and sue me. Otherwise you might go missing. That's what I tell people all the time, but I'm just kidding. But, but then when we, talk about, when we talk about what else is covered, well, listen, you know, say, take a renter's policy. You're covered for your contents. You're covered for a place to stay while you're waiting for where you were living to be repaired. Now, here's the thing. Most people want to go cheap on contents. As I said, I've got the clients, the husband and wife, everything they own is Gucci, Fendi, Chanel, you name a high-end a high product, they've got it. 
So they know that they, and, and the other thing is, yes, they do have a full, um, a full uh, home, a personal home inventory down to the last sweat sock. So they know they're going to get every dime back should anything happen. So that's one thing. You want to get your contents back because I tell people you can't work naked, not in New York City. Hmm. Uh, and yeah, you need, you, at least you need socks to keep your feet happy. Um, but then also you need what's called additional living expenses because you have to now go out and get a hotel, motel, holiday, holiday in room to stay until you can find another apartment. And I guess the best example I can give of this is uh, back in 2016, knock on wood, I don't want another plane like this again. Family got burned out of their home in Queens. Because it was husband, wife, and three kids, you can't put them in a studio apartment. The insurance company rented a house for them in Queens of similar size and nature for one year on the utilities, even put food in the refrigerator for the first two weeks. That alone came to $40,000. The rent on that rental house was $3,000 a month. That's what you're facing if you find yourself burned out. Remember, Red Cross only puts you up for one or two days, if that long, because when the next, when the next emergency happens, they ask you to vacate the premises. That's the truth. So that's, that's what you're looking at, the coverages, what you're looking at a renter's insurance policy, coverage for your personal belongings, your ability to stay somewhere after, after a covered disaster, and the two forms of liability I spoke of. Beautiful. I mean, Mr. Griezmann, I, 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 I understand this, and I say to you, I, I feel the passion that this brings about because we want to inform the people of what they need to think about. But I also know it scares the living day a lot of people. And sometimes when they hear these things, they just, you know, they listen, they understand it, and they rather just try to uh, put their head back in the sand and not deal with it. Because again, they figure, hey, this is, I don't see this happening to me right now, so I don't need to deal with it. But that's where these insurance protections come in because again, we don't know when the problem is going to happen, right? But uh, like you stated, when it does happen, that's the immediate time everybody will pay an arm and a leg for whatever coverage would be available to lead them of their situation. So it's pennies versus dollars. And on the preventive side, you know, these policies are very, very reasonable considering what they protect in the long run. So definitely. Uh, Nubia, for you, how can someone gradually tra tra transition to paying for cleaning services. And I believe this is from a residential standpoint, as most, as most of our clients are single and some couples. Well, uh, let me see, transitioning, I don't know if that would be the right word. I do work with my customers. Um, if a customer has a space to clean and cannot afford the entire price, I am willing to break up the clean. So we'll clean this floor this week and maybe next week we'll come back and do the next floor. The problem occurs when they want you to do everything at the same time, but they don't have the money to pay and then they get upset with you. And I try very hard to explain to them that it's impossible to do everything for a hundred dollars. That just doesn't, I mean, come on, I have to pay the person I sent and I'm like, so I'm willing to work with them, to meet them where they are. And most of my clients are really, really understanding. So it's not a problem. Um, but I look at each case individually. I don't paint everything with a big brush. I, I'm in the, I come from a Black community and Black folks don't like paying for nothing. Bless their hearts. We love y'all. But so... I, I'm used to working with people and, you know, just meeting them where they are. Everybody's not at the same place and you can't paint everybody with a broad brush. As it relates to most of my, in the beginning, most of my couples were young single professionals. Then I realized that I started getting dinks, double income, no kids. And then I started getting, so now my clients are just everybody. I don't, I mean, I don't have a target group now because everyone needs cleaning. So it's it's hard to say that this is my target group. 
everybody, office, no matter who you are, how old you are, if you have a place that needs to be done, we can do it for you. They just, have, they just need the willingness to pay for the quality service. That's it. <laughs> well, cook, cook for me for two months. Hey, you, you just put that on, you just put that into the universe. You know, there's going to be some people who hold you to that. Well, guess what? At the, at the end of that two months, we'll negotiate another two months. That means <laughs> I never have to worry about cooking. That's, you have no idea how important that is for me. Hey, we, we, we come from a bartering society, right? So we work it out as we see fit. <laughs> so, I mean, Mr. Grief, so here's another one for you. Insurance for death benefits. Wait a minute. Insurance for death benefits. But what about policies that have living benefits? Sure. And in addition to that, here's a trick question for you. Right. What age should someone typically take out life insurance? Are they breathing? There you go. I, you know, I knew it was going to be something like that because the minute they should be able to, they need it. You know, let me, it's let, me put it, let, me, let me put it to you this way. When my daughter was born, she had some medical issues and even the company I was working for then before I had my, before I opened my own agency 25 years ago, they wouldn't insure her. And because they had rejected her, a lot of other places wouldn't take her. And I, you don't know how long and how anxiously I waited for my child to be able to get life insurance, finally. I tell anybody, um, it's not a question, especially if, look, if you're a younger person and you don't have responsibility for children, you don't, maybe you're still living with mom and dad, um, maybe, uh, you know, whatever it is, let me put it this way. It's not a question of me wanting money in case you die. No, it's me wanting to put you away with dignity and honor. Should you die young? Number one. And number two, let's say you're 30, 35. And then one day you're not feeling well, you go to the doctor and the doctor says, oh, you got multiple sclerosis has happened to one of my clients recently. I uh, was trying to get her to buy disability. Her mother was trying to get her to buy it and I was trying to get more life insurance. I said, sweetheart, it's not whether you live or die. It's, it's, whether, it's whether you're insurable. Remember something, ladies and gentlemen, you buy life and disability and long-term care insurance with your health. If your health is in any way compromised, either the price goes way up or you can't buy it anymore. So I tell anybody, do yourself, do your children a favor, buy them insurance as soon as you're able, period. Because, because now you're protecting their insurability. And then once they reach a certain age and they can get more coverage, then I tell you what, get as much as you can on them, even if it's just term insurance. It's about protecting their insurability. Just make sure that whatever policy you get, if it's a term policy, it has, you have the right to convert that term insurance into a permanent form of insurance, no matter what, whether it's universal life, whether it's, whether it's regular cash value, whole life, what have you. Um, it's about insurability. And now you say living benefits. Let me, let me give you some of the living benefits. Back in 1983, I put insurance on a couple from Trinidad, Tobago. They just bought a house up on Cornelia Street by Irving Street. We'll never forget Irving Avenue, never forget it. And I figured out for them that instead of prepaying the mortgage, which means that you get nothing in case you drop dead except a foreclosure notice when somebody can't pay the mortgage. I said, instead of doing that, I'm gonna show you how by putting, by just having this much life insurance to cover the outstanding amount of the mortgage, and what have you, the cash value in 22 years will be enough to pay off the mortgage if you just take a, a cash loan, don't take out, don't kill the policy, but take a cash loan against the policy. So several years later, I left that company, opened my own business. I'm walking in the street one day, Mr. Prudential, Mr. Prudential. I'm not, I don't know, who's yelling Mr. Prudential? And I looked and I looked at the woman and I said, bam, it was the guy's wife. I said, how do you like this? It was 22 years to the month. She said, we just paid off the mortgage. Now that's a living benefit because you see you lived, you didn't necessarily die, but you were able to use the benefits in the policy to make your living better. But now with, other, now with policies today, they do have what's called accelerated living benefits, which takes the place 
of a long-term care policy. So that let's say if you have, I'm gonna use a number, $500,000 in insurance, and you need to go into a nursing home. If you have living, as they call it, living benefits or accelerated benefits, you can actually reduce the face amount of your life insurance policy so that you can go and stay in that nursing home or get at home care. Okay, so yeah, so a life insurance policy, it's not your grandma's life insurance. It's not your great grandpa's life insurance when people of color couldn't even buy more than a thousand dollars in life insurance if you were if you were Negro, because the old life insurance applications put down your ethnicity. So you were yellow, you were brown, you were Negro, you were Indian, meaning American Indian, and you we weren't allowed to buy more than a thousand dollars. So it's not your great grandpa's life insurance anymore. Yes, you do have those benefits in the policy. Yeah. Appreciate the question. Yes, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, uh, we have another one coming in, and I want us to be mindful of time because mm -hmm. I know we have maybe five minutes before we need to close out. Uh, do you rec recommend whole life or term one over the other? And what does a good policy look like as far as insurability interest for a loved one like a parent? Okay, a good policy is the one that's in force and with sufficient money to do what it's supposed to do when the person dies. That's a good policy. Do I, in terms of whole life or term, if you can afford to do what you have to do to meet, as I call it, the responsibilities of life and you can do it with a whole life policy, Look, why do people buy a house? You buy a house because you want to build equity. You don't want to rent because renting is like buying term insurance. You have it for a certain period of time. And when the term is over, you have nothing. At least if you have a house, if you have that cash value policy, if you have that house for 20 years, you build equity in that policy. So if they can afford to do it and want to do it, I say, let's go whole life all the way. If they can't really do it like that, then I say, let's do term and protect your insurability and make sure if you walk out the door, the money you're responsible for walks in. But if you can do a blend, I do what's called a blended policy. Some whole life, maybe a lot of term. But remember what I said earlier, always get make sure you have the ability to convert that term insurance to whole life. Because who you are today is not going to be who you are six years from now. You, so you, know, you may not only be able, excuse me, to, to hire Ms. Roberts, you may also be able to, to and pay her the money she wants, right, and she deserves. You may also be able to convert that term into whole life. So, and I want people to be very careful of these television companies who talk about John, who was missing five, five of his toes on each foot and missing his eyeballs and coughs every time he talks, was able to get a term life policy for $500,000 for $2 a month. No, look at the, I, I freeze those with the DVR and I read the small print. They don't give you, it's 10 year term, there's, and, and you still have to go through a medical exam and the whole nine yards. So don't believe everything you see on television and especially those commercials where they talk about only <laughs> buy what you need. That's a whole nother seminar right there. Let, let, well, let's continue. I'm, yeah, Mr. Spears, you know, those commercials are only, they're, they're there for what purpose? Marketing, right? And they put that fine print there for a reason. And again, like you, you know, we're used to reading a booklet of documents to make sure that we can uh, let the client know exactly what is in the product they are purchasing. You know, mm -hmm. so we are addicted to pausing that screen and reading that fine print to say, oh, you see that? You can't even see what that screen says because it's blended in. And it's such a fine print that no one's reading it. But the, the image of that happy family is what's inputted in the person's mind. And that low dollar cost is what's going to attract them to paying. Up until the point when that tragedy happens and they wonder why, hey, Mr. Greaves, I have this policy, but I'm not able to access it. They said my claim is being denied. Why? And this is from the uh, small print. So, yes. I implore everyone on this call tonight, contact your financial, uh, your insurance providers, your financial professionals, have the conversation of what you don't understand. Or, you know, look at your surroundings, consider if you may need Miss Roberts cleaning services, because again, time is what we can't, we can't produce more of. So if you're too busy, 
to improve the quality of cleanliness don't you know sl don't look slight sight to the appointment that you would make with Ms. Roberts to get that cleaning done it's for your sanity it's for your health it's for your health because again your insurability is behind back by your health <coughs> uh, for those you know please join the Facebook live uh, our Facebook live group we're gonna post Mr. Greaves's information and Mrs. Roberts information for those who can contact them about their business. Give me one second, let me just put this out there. Mr. Greaves can be reached at 718-783-2722. Again, that's 718-783-2722 or 718-489-2218. And his, his website is grievesinsurance.com. So please don't hesitate to reach out. Nubia, your company's information, if you don't mind, just giving it out briefly, uh, but just before we close out. Absolutely. So my telephone number is 646-474-7283. That again is 646-474-7283. My email is wecare, W-E-C-A-R-E, -E, at comfyspace.biz, B-I-Z. Beautiful, beautiful. We have one last thing before we do give in closing remarks. Uh, for all the attendees tonight, we have a question that for the first person who's able to answer in the chat, they will receive a gift certificate from the p -Life firm. So here's the question. Uh, could anyone explain the difference between term and whole life insurance? And we're going to wait for that information in the chat, not the panelists. <laughs> well, okay, that's where that, that small disclaimer comes out for those, you know, who are a part of the company or friends and families are not eligible for the prize. <laughs> um, so... As, we, as I'm watching the chats, the chat, this is going to be what I'm looking at. But I want to say thank you for everyone who's came on tonight's call. Uh, this is going to close out for Black History Month. And, you know, we're looking at the ending of February. We want to make sure that we plan on the third Thursday of March, which we will be looking at Women's History Month. And we're going to highlight, again, two entrepreneurs. We're going to have the stories that they bring for us, which will be, again, uh, vital information for us to consider as we build on this financial literacy platform where we bring on the information that people can use uh, throughout their life, right? And each month will be a build on. But again, we're going to emphasize Women's History Month being in March and uh, bring on two great additional uh, panelists to our forum. So we have we have a lot of questions here, but if Mr. Greaves, if you don't mind, please check your chats. I want you to be the, the one to, to okay the information being given. I don't see a direct, I don't see a direct uh, answer to the question, but I'd like you to be one of the additional judges. And please everyone bear with us because I know we're running over about four minutes now, uh, but we would love to give, give this opportunity for someone to receive this gift card. I, so, like Tom, I like the fact that Tom Stiggers said that, oh, snap, no fair. You see, I wasn't able to answer the question. But anyway, thank you, Tom. But uh, Tom should win. No, I'm just kidding. Let me see now. Term, short term, whole life, lifetime. Okay. Death benefit includes. Okay. Lord, have everybody had time to Google. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Uh, let me put it this way. Term is a policy that's. I'm sorry, ro rotatable? What? Yeah, well, no, I, I guess they would want to consider, oh. yeah, convertible. Conver convertible, okay, we'll go. Yeah. Like, I've got news for you, you got a problem because every answer is actually correct. <sighs> but, okay, so I'm going to go, I'm going to pull the trigger on this one. Uh -oh. I'm going to go with Christina. Christina has a, a, complete, a, a complete overview of the answer, right? Term is short term. Whole life is lifetime. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, well, Sharon is mad at you. <laughs> but that's all right. That's all right. Christina. Listen, but this is where we keep it fun, right? I want to we want to encourage people to keep logging on as the months go. And you know, listen up for these little fun tidbits that come about. There's a prize attached. Okay. But okay. You can you can you can charge me for that one. I feel that's a more concise holistic view of the answer okay all right okay well listen uh christina i think the, the office has your information we'll definitely reach out and uh award you that gear certificate uh, so for right now again like we said we want to thank everyone who were who was able to attend you know spread the word follow on facebook follow on all social media let's bring in this community and uh, provide the information that can enhance our futures, right? Enhance our livelihoods and protect ourselves. So it's not only just the mind, it's the body, it's the soul, it's the family, it's the business. Let's bring it all together. And we do this as a community. So again, thank you everyone for attending. Thank you, Mr. Greg. Thank you, Ms. Nubia. Thank you for the PLI firm. Thank you, Noreen, Whitney, uh, Latoya. You know, there's a lot that goes on in the background that brings this, you know, to bring this kind of event together. And again, to support the individuals who are clients and those who have questions to become clients. So we want to be thankful for everyone to learn about the mailing list in the chat. So, you know, follow the, for the future events, check the chat, uh, subscribe, send us your information. So you'll be well informed as we continue to build on this community forum. All right, everyone. With that, um, Noreen, if you don't mind, let's just close out. Thank you so much again to each and every one of you. We truly appreciate you taking um, the time this evening away from family. Um, and we look forward to have a wonderful evening, um, as we like to say. Um, Stay positive, test negative, wash your hands. Nubia would agree with us, wear your mask and um, see you next month when we're celebrating uh, Women's History Month. Thanks again. Um, there is a survey. When you receive it, please let us know what you think. If there are ideas that you have and you wanna share, we would be more than happy um, to just you know, entertain those ideas and we, we want to get some feedback from you. So share our video on Facebook. We want this um, information to go out and we want for others to be empowered. Thank you so much and have a good night. Good night.